to maintain. I'm Tahira White. Um, I have been existing in the production and marketing ecosystem for about 15 years now. I call it in the trenches. Um, I started as an intern, uh, then coordinator, manager, producer, and then starting my own production company and agency about seven years ago called 19th and Park. Um, at 19th and Park, we call in ourselves as creative execution agency. We go with the execution, production first model, talent first, creator first model as well, helping solve creative marketing solu uh, uh, problems for niche audiences, helping our clients reach niche audiences, whether that's the African American community, LGBTQ, Gen Z is a big target market as well. Um, as a producer, uh, what I've seen the most is when the ideas are kind of coming together on the agency side, a lot of the execution isn't really thought through, right? You're not really thinking about how much it's going to cost, how much these 15 to 30 to 40 different people are going to need to be paid to make your commercial happen. And when that doesn't happen, it's a domino effect. Everyone that is on the executional side is affected. They get low rates, they're struggling. We're even seeing some of that reflected in the strikes, right? That we've seen across writers uh, and actors as well. Um, in addition to that, as a producer, I've noticed that there's been inefficiencies in the way that we operate. Now, we've watched every other sector be disrupted by technology, yet not really ours yet. Um, one of the main things is in how we manage resources, um, how we allocate talent, and so, one of the solutions that I've started to work on over the last two years is called Workflow. And Workflow is what we're coining as a SaaS productivity tool for content production. So we go into your emails, we extract your call sheets, we create a network relationship management platform for you. Now the next time you need to hire a camera operator, the next time you need to hire a director, you don't have to scroll through your emails and your text messages because unfortunately a lot of the industry still works in that way. You're able to go to one platform and manage it, uh, manage your candidates, your options, all of your communication in one place. And why we've, um, while we originally started building this very, uh, I'm going to say archaically as well. We'll take, I will take that on. The moment that we had an opportunity to leverage AI, it extra, it created uh, an, an intense um, amount of. Uh, it actually like just helped our extractions the way that we operate as a whole go about like I would say 30 times faster than our original product. And that became one of the first key points for us to start thinking about other ways in which AI can be utilized through the productivity ecosystem um, across uh, both production and marketing. So what you heard the host say is the mood around, mar uh, around AI in this ecosystem right now, unfortunately, is very fearful. Um, but I think that there's an opportunity for us to be a bit more hopeful. Right now, you hear a lot of concerns around job loss. Uh, I remember when we were at Cannes this year, OpenAI held their, it was the opening session for the Wall Street Journal. And so you had all these advertising executives, copywriters, senior level um, team members there. And they're like, are we going to lose our jobs? And it's like, no, let's, let's switch the mindset here. There's understandably some concerns about proprietary rights, right? Like, who's going to own the IP? How do you protect your name and likeness? How do you maintain copyright protection? And while those are all very important, and hopefully our legislation moves faster than they move with most things um, to be able to address that and create some comfort um, and solution for us, there's also the, the opportunity to, to, as I mentioned, optimize these tools to keep up with and thrive in this ecosystem, um, especially an ecosystem that's rapidly changing, driven by the change in uh, the media landscape you have the fragmentation of networks from Instagram to TikTok to Snapchat to your website to your e-com. There's so many different places that you need to be able to optimize your content on. And that takes a lot for one person if you're a small business or even a team of 10 people to be able to do. And so as marketers, creators, and operators, as AI continues to break down the wall, which we have no choice, we can't stop the force, it's also going to drive a wealth of content. It's going to help us be able to ideate a lot more, I you know, come up with more ideas. There's going to then be an expectation that the executors, being the producers, the operators, the filmmakers, the creators, be able to make these things and make it very quickly and swiftly. And so what I want to talk to you all about today is some ways to really do what I like to say is like stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And I want to make this an open forum. It's kind of how I do my talks. I don't like to just 
talk at you for 15 minutes, but I want to also hear from you about what are some resources and ways that you are solving some of your efficiency issues and productivity issues uh, in your companies uh, or in your respective places. So um, there are three key areas that I see, at least, AI helping us to address some pain points. That's in customer experience, that's in growth, and as I've been talking about a lot, that's in productivity. So one of the first items are consumer and audience insights. Actually, before I get into this, how many marketers do I have in the room here? Okay, producers, salespeople that are responsible for, okay, okay, great. Founders, okay, y'all are marketers too. I mean, your product is nothing without some marketing, right? Okay, so some of these solutions, if it's not for you, it's also for ways that you can be implementing uh, these, these tools into your teams. So the first item, I like to start with the top of the funnel, which is always like creative ideation and strategy. And so what we've been seeing from the agency side and also on the brand side is uh, using AI to uh, uh, enhance consumer and audience insights that then inform your strategy and your media plan. Media plan. So that's, your, that's creating optimization around your leads, that's getting information you know, that is in real time and based on consumer trends. Um, I maybe can follow up with some of this information because I don't have any slides, but there's two uh, products that we use um, and that we've seen our brand partners use. That's Brand Watch and that's Talk Walker. Now, why this is important, again, you can spend $20,000, you can spend $10,000, you can spend $100,000 on a campaign, right? Or what you think might be uh, real, then you may, before you even get to that, end up spending another ten thousand dollars, twenty, thirty thousand dollars on an agency that is getting you consumer insights. But now tools are made available that you can invest in directly. You should know your community more than anyone else. You can plug that in. You can pull real data. You can get a better sense of your consumer trends. What do they like? What do, what do they not like? Who are creators that they're following that they're already interested in? And begin to bake that actually into your marketing plan. So I'm giving you all some hacks that we do as an agency, but everyone can't really afford that, right? And so it's important to understand that those are also tools that are reachable for you. Once we get past the ideation and strategic stage, we now have a media plan, we now have a sense of the audience that we want to speak to, um, and maybe now we've come up with some creative ideas. We have a couple of creators that we, or influencers that we want to engage. We have an animation that we want to create, um, or we have a video concept that we want to produce. You then also have optimization AI tools like Outranking and Blend that you can put these strategies into and run A-B testing. That goes for whether it's your page layouts, whether it's your copy, whether it's animatics, um, all of those types of ways of ideating that can be put into these optimization tools that test and give you feedback, again, so you don't now waste your money in buying uh, your Facebook ads. You don't waste your money in buying your Instagram ads. You don't waste your money in actually running a commercial that no one actually cares about, right? Again, you could invest in another agency, an insight agency that's going to do this for you, but now the tools are in your hands to be able to do it yourself. For us, for us as an agency, it also just allows more time for our team. So my team doesn't now need to spend 20 hours going to multiple different platforms that's now you know, reduced down to a couple of hours uh, if at, at, at max. Um, again, following the flow of content creation, once you've tested, you've done your A-B testing, you have an idea of what's going to work, now you need to get into your budget development. That's my, um, it's my favorite part of the conversation to come in on, as you heard me mention before. Now, what is it actually going to take you to make this thing happen? Now, the budget development may, for some of you, be even before you even get into testing because you've got to figure out, especially founders, executives, how you've got to allocate your budgets across the board, across the year, across the quarter. You now have tools and a part of what we're building into workflow is, let's say you have, you've seen a similar campaign or two campaigns on YouTube um, that you want to be able to create. You can then take that link, drop it into our optimization model and be able to get a rough estimate of what it's going to cost you to make that happen. That means, did that take a director? Were there multiple locations? Were there multiple cameras? Things that oftentimes marketers, salespeople, people that are responsible for the budgets, you may not know, 
but you, you know, may have to wait for a producer to get back to you or go to your production team. Hopefully you have that. Or you are going to an agency with this budget that's unrealistic and you're getting rejected. You don't really want that, right? You want to be able to plan your content a bit more strategically. So using AI content optimization as well, you're able to drop these links and get a sense of how it was actually created to educate yourselves and better plan for what you're looking to do. Once you have your budget, all of those line items that I mentioned now have to be hired. So how do you go about finding the people, finding your directors, finding your illustrators, finding your copywriters, uh, finding your gaffers, all of these individuals that collectively are required to make this thing happen. And again, another item that we are, another feature that is included in workflow is really having this resource management tool. Maybe there are some others out there. If they are, I'm not plugging them and I don't know them. Um, but realistically, you know, we are, we're often tasked with, you've approved this budget, you have this idea. By the time you've now done that whole dance, you probably have maybe a week or two weeks to get to production. And therefore, you need everything, all of those administrative or items need to move swiftly. And by using tools such as Workflow, you're able to think about Indeed when you are, you know, you're vetting different uh, staff members, that you're able to look at your directors, photographers, get insight from them, get their availability, book them, move through the paperwork very swiftly and quickly. Now we've shot, you have your team, you hire your team, we shot, we loved it, now you're in post-production. Now you need to look at, you know, what are, you gonna need to go through the rounds of, uh, editing this video. I'm sure there's about to be multiple rounds of videos from, the, from today's uh, conference. How, is, how are all of those assets, whether it's your images or your videos managed? You have a variety of platforms that are AI driven that help you optimize that process as well. Make sure that it's easily collaborative so that your creative director from Shanghai and your creative director from London and your producer in New York are all getting real-time information and real insights. And so one of the tools that we use that I'm happy to share with you all is called Frame.io. They're actually just acquired by Adobe. Um, but in addition to managing those assets in one place, you're also able to get those assets immediately um, from onset. Time is flying by. So the last thing I will also share is like expansion of creativity is another thing that we lean into. So there are a couple of agencies I can't actually remember the name of the agency, but the client was Michelob, uh, Michelob Ultra. I don't know if you guys saw the McEnroe versus McEnroe uh, content piece last year, anyone? One of the best things I've seen in a really long time, and that was all AI driven, right? And so what they were able to do was create, take, was it about like 10 years of John McEnroe uh, playing and put that into put that into a system that then recreated an avatar of him that he actually got to play against in real life. And that became a live match that was streamed, had over billions of impressions, great ROI for the brand as well, all driven by AI. So I say all of that to say it's an opportunity to be, and I feel like I need to be talking to the advertising uh, group as well, but there's an opportunity to really be optimistic about the way that AI can drive some productivity, really enhance your customer experiences, enhance your sales experiences too, and really guarantee you return of investment on your content uh, plans and the content that you put out and experiences um, as well. So thank you. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Do we have any questions? Also, any resources, if there's any tools that you guys have seen that have been helpful in the content development space, I would love to hear that as well. I'll start off with a question. So what would you, if you could just describe a few things, like when you're, if you think about clients that are coming to you now versus coming to you two years ago, what are some of the main things differently that you're hearing in terms of the requests that they're getting or in terms of you thinking about your ability to service their needs? Um, a lot of the demand that we're getting right now is being able to target Gen Z, right? Um, and really like the new interface of consumers because people have a different type of appetite for content. You have to be authentic, which is where those consumer insights are extremely important. You can't just tell a broad general market story and think that anyone's gonna care or relate to it. So the ability to really be able to have like niche focuses 
um, and probably sometimes segment your focus based on the audience that you're targeting has become really important more so than ever before. Um, and that's something that clients come to us a lot for. Um, I would say additionally, sorry, being able to report on diversity metrics, um, which is what we're able to output from workflow. And Wrapbook is another great resource as well from a payment platform standpoint. But uh, being able to uh, immediately report on your hiring of your vendors, the type of vendors um, and freelancers and creatives that you're engaging, that gets buy-in from CMOs, especially today. There's a lot of pressure coming downhill. So being able to use the tools to, to track on that has been important. Any questions from the audience for Tahira? OK, well, great. Thanks. Oh, sorry, we got one right here. Just, w just one question. Like, given all the you know, presentations that you all have given, what are the jobs that one should focus on that are not going to go away? Like, is it product management? Is it customer service? Yeah, I think. Both of those are here to stay for sure. I think any, this is just my opinion, anything that requires an emotional perspective is not going to go away. Anything from a storytelling perspective is not going to go away. So I think when we talk about creatives, directors, producers as well, it's more about creating more efficiencies because we're all also tired. We're burnt out, we're overworked. So when I think about AI, I think about having a little bit better quality of life because I now have this tool that's going to make things a bit easier for me and help me get through some of the administrative work. But again, like creative directors, copywriters, I don't really think that any jobs are being re uh, erased. There may be some reskilling and upskilling that everyone's going to be challenged with doing, but I think that the opportunity to still have your role exist. So I have another question. Does um, I know we use um, data analytics and programming to create AI, but can AI also write code? I don't know. Uh, I would assume I so. Yes. In fact, <laughs> we we like have a demo actually at 4:30 uh, today of a guy who's built a program that writes code. It's called right. Software Testing AI. So. We'll get to hear from that. Yeah, cool. I would love to see that, too. So um, so I work in a bank. Uh, it's a big bank in the city. And I'm handling the trading group equity stocks trading uh, for all three global regions, EMEA, APAC, AMRS. Basically, the application does uh, a equity algorithms um, for futures and options. So all essentially what the application does is it's getting rid of it, like traders. Tr like the job of the traders have been replaced by the application. The algorithm runs based on certain criteria like price, quantity, all of those criteria, mathematical models, and executes the trades. And because it executes the trades, there's no way that a human can do as much like in terms of efficiency, in terms of how fast. Right. And that's the reason, like it seems like 80% of the US stock exchange is being, the trading is being happening through equity trading algorithms for futures and options, stocks, and foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are get, we've already gotten rid of 80% of the trade, or maybe like God knows 200% of the traders, because. Do you, have a, do you have a question in there? We're, we're going to so need to start wrapping up. Is, yeah. My question is, right now, the programmers who are writing the code based on the criteria, like price, quantity, mathematical model, then execute this trade, will that also be written by AI? And if essentially, the programmer is also going to go away. I don't have an answer for that question. <laughs> I think that if that is the case, it's a very long time from now, for sure. Thank you right. so much, Tahira. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Excellent.